Usually, we only ever see the outside of something, but the term, don't judge a book by its cover, applies to inanimate objects as well as each other, as so many items have amazing interiors revealed by their cross sections. Using laser cutting and other techniques, we're able to investigate the inside of objects better than ever before. Amazing! Number 20, golf balls. White and pitted on the outside, we all know the texture features of the golf ball's exteriors. Inside and out, they're actually staggeringly well engineered, and undergo many analytical tests to assess how far they travel, how stable they are in the air, and how quickly they rise and fall. These are partly controlled by the ball's dimples which create turbulence around its surface, but what forms their weighty interior? Photographer James Friedman took these great photos, these sliced golf balls, have been perfectly cut in half to reveal their colourful cores, which are akin to gobstoppers or model planets. Some clearly have layers of different materials, which are colour-coded depending on their intended effects on a golfer's game. One thing is for sure, golf balls are exquisitely built for something so frivolously hammered up the range, though not all of them are built equally. Number 19. Bowling Balls if golf balls were planets, then this ball is the sun. Cutting open a big old bowling ball reveals a hard core of weighty resin, or different shaped weights which affect the way the bowling ball travels. There are two things that a bowling ball needs to do, roll quickly and precisely. They feature a characteristically smooth surface to help them glide, and are weighted between 6 to 16 pounds. To help them make up this weight, the cross section reveals a resinous interior, but some bowling balls feature metal or resin weights inside them too. These aren't all Always spherical either. Some weights are elliptically shaped, like eggs, or are shaped like bulbs. This is to influence the momentum of the bowling ball, supposedly helping it to accelerate all the way up to the pins for maximum impact. Number 18. Bullets. Bullets are formed from many components. They're pieces of precision engineering as they need to fly true to their trajectory and most importantly, fire in the first place and not backfire or jam. When you pull the trigger, the first component that's engaged is the metal firing pin in the bottom of the cartridge. This ignites a small explosive, which then ignites the propellant, which is a big explosive, usually gunpowder, which you can see filling most of the bullet. Lots of energy is generated very quickly in a tiny space and the sudden pressure pushes the bullet from the cartridge at extremely high speed. 300 meters per second or 1000 feet per second is typical for a handgun. Once fired, the cartridge itself is ejected from the gun. Number 17, Aloe Vera. This plant has been used medicinally for thousands of years, and when you see its cross section, you'll realize why it's so soothing when you get a sunburn. It's a type of plant called a succulent, and this cross section illustrates why. It's full of some awesome gel sap, which can be rubbed on wounds or rashes to soothe them. Number 16, Camera Lens. Here's some more mechanical intricacy. This cross section reveals that a camera lens is an astoundingly complex bit of kit that comprises of many interlinked lenses that move in tandem in order to focus light onto a camera's film or digital sensor. Number 15, shell. Nature's cross sections always provide interesting forms. Shells are particularly complex and when studied as a cross-section, the wonderful patterns are revealed in all their beauty. Some shells follow near-perfect logarithmic scales, namely the golden ratio, in accordance with Fibonacci. Whether shells perfectly follow this phenomenon or not, they're still mystifying. A mollusk, who once called a shell you find on the beach home, excreted, maybe millions of years ago, calcium carbonate, which solidifies in strangely perfect patterns. Spirals with twisting interior chambers and colourful, smooth, or knob exteriors. But why are they so complex? It's not easy to answer, but at some point they may have evolved these complex shells to adapt better to their environment. Number 14. Jawbreaker. They're rock solid and have a rocky, banded interior, where the multicoloured layers of sugar stack up to form these mammoth-sized sweets. This amazing cross-section reveals the gobstopper's sugary coloured layers. How beautiful! Number 13. Pot Noodle. Cutting an unassuming food packaging to reveal its contents often shows how little you actually get for your money. This pot noodle contains a couple of inches tops of pot noodles. Okay, it's still a snack and a kind of tasty one at that, but it's a big pot that misleads you into thinking you're getting a big meal when actually you're just getting a small amount of noodles. Number 12. Zippo Lighter 
a small little device. Zippos have been around for ages and have a classic look when you take their interior in a cross section. They're tried and tested and are made in the same way now as they ever were, with a wick drawing fluid up from a reservoir to where it's ignited with the flint. Number 11, Tortoise Skeleton. Want to really behold nature's complexity and beauty? The logical way is to go and cut a tortoise's skeleton in half, of course. Tortoises and turtle shells are extremely strong and encase all of the animal's vital organs. From this cross section, we can see how the shell is essentially an extension of the rib cage. The stronger outer layer is fused to the rib cage and connected to the tortoise's vertebrae. This is why you should never pick up a tortoise or turtle by the sides or top of the shell, only ever underneath to support its skeleton. Number 10, stem. This time we have a microscopic cross section, incredibly detailed and colorful. It reveals the complexity of a plant stem, the main component of a plant which supports it and brings nutrients up from the ground. There are a few different cells in a plant stem, but there are two main ones, which you may recollect from school, named xylem and phloem. They both bring up nutrients from the stem, but xylem are actually primarily dead cells that form the hard core of an adult stem, whereas phloem are still living, flexible tubes. Number 9. Plane. It's not just small things that humans have cut in half. This cross section reveals just how much storage there is beneath your feet as you're flying on an airplane. Some of us love flying and some of us hate it, whichever camp you're in. This cross section may or may not help you appreciate the structural integrity of a plane. There really isn't much metal separating you and the outside, but don't worry, plane testing these days is absolutely brutal. For example, most wings can flex an amazing 90 degrees. Number eight, lock and key. An everyday item that we never see the inside of. A lock and key is a surprisingly complex bit of engineering. We take them for granted, but they do so much work for us, securing our houses day and night, our cars, our school lockers, and our luggage. But how do they work? This cross section reveals the lock's barrels with several pins. When the key is pushed in, the pins are pushed down until they become flush with the barrel, which will allow the lock to turn. If the wrong key is inserted, some or all of the pins will still lock the door's barrel, preventing it from turning. Number seven, toothpaste. Ever wondered how the stripes in your toothpaste don't get mashed up? This cross section reveals all. Well, most of it anyway. It reveals that firstly, the stripes aren't coiled up inside the tube, but instead, the tube contains one big core of striped gel and paste. When you squeeze the tube, this large cylinder of paste gets forced through a smaller tube and compacts. This is based on a branch of physics called rheology which deals with the complex flow of liquids like gels. The different gels in toothpaste have identical flow characteristics, which means the whole tube flows as one, even though it's forced through a hole. Number six, cruise ship. Ships are sometimes lengthened by cutting them in half and adding a cross section into the middle of the boat. And then they're, of course, welded back up to be watertight and strong. This is what you're seeing here. They're incredibly large, densely packed vehicles that can weigh hundreds of thousands of tons. This particular ferry was lengthened a huge 75 feet by adding a cross section into the middle of it. It might have been a lot of work, but it's still cheaper than a new boat. Number five, gray owl. Owls are big birds. Their feathers are very thick and densely layered, and they have big round heads with big eyes. Shed all of the feathers though, and an owl may not look so majestic and wise, but instead small and scrawny, resembling a chick. To be fair though, all birds would look similar to this if they didn't have feathers, and you can really see the dinosaur in them, from which they originally evolved. An owl's plumage is dense and well layered. It definitely looks warm. It's like having a coat a couple times thicker than your actual body. Number four, gas station. Okay, okay, they didn't get some giant excavators and diggers to cut up a real gas station. This is just a model, but an interesting one at that. And I bet you'd never considered just how much gas lies beneath our gas stations. Beneath where you stand at the pump lies an enormous reservoir. Now that explains why these things cause such massive explosions in movies. Number three, fireworks. Fireworks are just primitively built explosives, but they do feature a host of chambers that are filled with different chemicals which produce different color explosions. A fuse delays the takeoff long enough to get away from the firework and then it's propelled into the air. Number two, grenade. 
precision engineered to work reliably, just the way you need them to. A grenade is formed from many mechanical components, exposed by its cross-section. They work similar to bullets. There are explosives held in a reservoir that is triggered by a chain reaction. There are actually three small explosions that happen in series. If you look at the components from the top to the bottom, you can trace this reaction. A grenade is triggered by a striker that lies inside the grenade. When the grenade is inactive, the striker is held in place by the pin on the outside of the grenade. But once you pull the pin, the spring is released and the striker creates a small spark which lights the fuse. The fuse material delays the explosion. It has to burn all the way through and when it does, it sets off the detonator explosives which then cause the larger amount of material in the outside of the grenade to explode. Number 1. Visa Cards this is something that is well and truly taken for granted, until you run out of money and really appreciate the power this small card has over you. They sit in our wallet day in, day out. It might seem like they just contain a chip, but don't forget the card strip too. That lies below the chip, within the card's slim interior. There's more metallic circuitry here than you'd guess, as Visa cards aren't just plastic after all. There's certainly some extremely cool cross-sections here. Which cross-section did you think was the most interesting? Leave a comment down below to let me know. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to subscribe, clicking that bell icon to stay updated.